Good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday, June 17th. From the San Antonio Express News, my name is Luis Vasquez, and this is your Express Briefing. All the stories you need to know to start your day. You can expect mostly sunny skies and a high of 91. Today, the Texas Historical Commission will discuss Alamo renovation plans. They're expected to ratify the Executive Committee's application to exhume four bodies buried in the church, with several other issues on the agenda as well. We're also expecting an announcement from the Whitty Museum this morning, so be sure to check out expressnews.com for updates. Then, our taste team will take a look at the historic contributions that African American foodways have made on plates we all know and love across South Texas. And now, the top headlines for the day. Sixty-year-old Charles Hood was recognized on Tuesday as Fire Chief of the Year. The prestigious honor was voted on by the Metropolitan Fire Chiefs Association, a group of 200-plus fire industry leaders from around the world. Hood, who oversees the department with 2,000 employees, took the opportunity to look back on his 36-year career. He highlighted a number of accomplishments he's proud of, including recent efforts to improve the fire department's insurance service rating and help it gain national accreditation. Emil Eaton has more on the ways that this SAFD chief is using his platform to discuss issues of racial bias. As the coronavirus pandemic took hold, San Antonio and other cities required residents to wear masks in public and places such as grocery stores where social distancing is difficult. Governor Greg Abbott effectively undid that requirement when he issued an order in late April preventing local governments from fining or jailing people for not wearing masks in public. At the same time, he also announced plans to allow businesses to begin reopening. HEB company spokeswoman Daya Campos said HEB is following local ordinances and strongly encouraging customers to wear face coverings. Employees and vendors are required to wear masks, but more than 27,000 people have signed an online petition saying that that's not enough. SAISD, which spans San Antonio's urban core, had more than 48,000 students last school year. About 90% were Hispanic, 6% Black, and 2% White. The district employs about 80 state-licensed police officers for its 100 schools in a department with a budget of about $5.6 million. The district's disciplinary and policing practices have occasionally provoked controversy. Students earlier this year asked trustees to reduce police involvement in their schools. Now, amid a national movement to reduce police funding, SAISD has rejected calls to disband its police department, but some trustees are pushing for a comprehensive review of student discipline policies. Aliyah Malik found out what they're hoping to change. Next up are your need-to-know headlines. You can find all of these headlines and more in your Express News subscription. Bear County reported more than 436 COVID-19 cases on Tuesday, the largest single-day increase since the start of the pandemic. The total number of confirmed cases now stands at 4,873. Governor Greg Abbott on Tuesday dismissed growing alarm over hospitals now swelling with coronavirus patients, insisting there's still plenty of space available even as some facilities have near or surpassed capacity. Concerned residents urged Bear County Commissioner on Tuesday to reform law enforcement to put an end to incidents of excessive use of force targeting African Americans and Hispanics. San Antonio Parks and Recreation and the San Antonio Parks Foundation announced on Tuesday that the official 4th of July celebration at Woodlawn Lake Park has been canceled this year due to COVID-19. The Eastside Second Baptist Church has dropped its month-long lawsuit against the city to house a migrant child shelter in its community center. The price of gasoline continues to creep up as more San Antonio area drivers hit the road as COVID-19 restrictions are eased. The price of a gallon is up 36.6 cents per gallon from last month. A Bear County grand jury has indicted three men in connection with a drive-by shooting that left a four-year-old boy dead in a hail of bullets while he played video games with his brother in their Eastside home in July of 2017. 
The Texas Democratic Party is asking the U.S. Supreme Court to weigh in on its lawsuit seeking to expand mail-in voting during the pandemic. In a lawsuit, San Antonio River Authority employee Ralph Bolado says he has endured various incidents of racial discrimination while on the job, from being hit by a pipe thrown by a supervisor to a colleague hanging a noose in his office door. At an online meeting, Harlandale ISD trustees appeared confused as they argued against, but finally accepted, a push by their state-appointed conservator to rehire the law offices of Walsh, Gallegos, Trevino, Russell, and Kyle as the district's general counsel. The Express News editorial board writes, Governor Greg Abbott has said he's concerned about these rising COVID-19 numbers, but that he's not alarmed. Is he concerned enough to make everyone wear a mask in public? In hosting a TCL team, the missions face an array of challenges, including assembling a roster and coaching staff, acquiring equipment, and developing a plan to welcome fans safely amid a pandemic. The organization hopes the revenues can help offset the potential loss of a minor league season. The missions will repurpose many of their preparations for the AAA season with TLC players wearing flying chanclas jerseys that would have gone to minor leaguers. And now, the fun stuff. Burbank boys basketball coach Herbert Jackson had been mulling the decision to retire he made on June 9th for at least a couple years. Jackson said he was having a difficult time separating himself from the program he created and the community he grew to love after 31 years of service. Dave Chappelle's furious new stand-up set, 846, which is now streaming on YouTube, leads our list of what's new in home entertainment. Flix Entertainment announced on Facebook that its dine-in movie theater and brew house on the city's far west side will reopen at 11 a.m. Friday with safety measures. San Antonio Chuck E. Cheese locations are back open for dine-in and games. The San Antonio Area Baseball Coaches Association is partnering with the Missions and Macombs Ford West to host a doubleheader for high school seniors on July 2nd at Wolf Stadium. Well, this was your Express Briefing. My name is Luis Vasquez. Consider becoming an Express News subscriber to get in-depth coverage on all the stories you heard today. Also, be sure to rate and review this podcast in your Apple Podcast app as it really helps the show. Have a wonderful day, everyone.